some time ago when I was surfing on the internet, a ridiculously cheap offer for business cards caught my eye. It was from a company called Vistaprint, maybe you heard about it. They are specialized on business cards but also on other advertising prints. And I didn't really need business cards, but this offer was so unbelievable cheap. Um, because they offered a bonus of 5 euros and therefore I could get 250 business cards for just 1 euro 99 or something like that. And therefore I clicked on the ad, which I normally had never done if the offer hadn't been that great. And I created my own business card with their online tool which was quite cool. They offered a lot of designs to which I could add my own picture, my own graphics. And it took me about uh, half an hour or almost one hour to figure out what was the best looking business card. And when I finished, I clicked through to the actual paying and there was the big surprise. Of course, I got a five euro bonus, that was nice. But the final price actually exploded because they wanted a processing fee and the price for packaging and shipping was unrageously expensive. So the final price was actually four or five times higher than the initial offer, even though there was this bonus. Of course, I said, forget it. <laughs> I won't pay one cent to these criminals. Well, to be honest, that was not really what I did. Actually, I really paid the full price. And the reason why I went into the fall, even though I realized, well, they just tricked you. The reason why I went into the fall, nevertheless, was the incredible efficiency of this low ball technique. I already had invested a lot of time and creativity and well, I was really satisfied with the resulting business cards. And therefore, my commitment was already really high. And that's the main reason why the low ball technique is so effective. You get attracted by the initial offer, which sounds fantastic. The next step is that you see yourself having the product and being happy with the product. And you think, well, that product will complete my life. And in the moment you are really satisfied, you are told, well, unfortunately, you have to pay a little bit more. Now it's much more difficult to say, no, forget it. I won't do it. And especially if you already invested some of your precious time. And this lowball technique is well known and there's a lot of research on this topic in the psychology of persuasion and it's really extremely often used in real life and much more often than we might know. So for example, think about the dating process. Most people try to present themselves in a much better light. So for example, they tell only the good stories, they post only the great uh, holiday pictures on Facebook, they use perfume, makeup, hair extensions, push-up bras, etc. So they all use this lowballing, which makes it look like the perfect offer. But after a while, the buyer, of course, will figure out that, well, if you take away the makeup, there might be a completely different person <laughs> next to you. But as you already invested a lot of time, a lot of your own impression management, you don't get angry and say, well, that's not what I bought. But you hold on and maybe you get even married or something like that. Because to be honest, as I already said, you were probably lowballing as well, which would be normal because almost everybody does it. So lowballing is a very effective persuasion technique. And there have been numerous studies on this topic. And one classical study that is often cited is the study by Cialdini and colleagues published in 1978 in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. The title of the study is Low Ball Procedure for Producing Compliance, Commitment, Then Cost. 
In this study, 63 students were called and asked to participate in an experiment on thinking processes. And on one group, the lowball technique was used. This group was first asked, well, would you participate in this experiment? And when they said yes, they were told, well, um, the room in which the experiment is being held is used during the day and evening by other people in the department. So we are running this experiment at seven o'clock in the morning. The other group of participants in the control condition were told the truth from begin on. They were told that this experiment starts at 7 o'clock a.m. and they were told the day. And then they were asked if they want to participate. But being honest from begin on was not that effective. Only 31% of the students said, okay, I will participate. But in the low ball condition, almost twice as many participants said, yeah, I will participate. It were all in all 56% who said yes. So this is a classical study. You can read about in many psychology textbooks, but it's already some years old and they only had 63 participants. So let's take a look at some more recent studies in which researchers tried to figure out under which circumstances the low ball technique works best. And one thing that is absolutely crucial about the low ball technique is to wait until the other person agrees to your first extremely good offer. If you don't wait for that, the low ball technique does not work. And this could be shown in the study by Berger and Cornelius, which was published in 2003 in the influential journal of Applied Social Psychology. And the title of their study was Raising the Price of Agreement, Public Commitment and the Low Ball Compliance Procedure. They had 216 participants who were all students and who were all called and asked, would you participate in a three mile charity run for needy children? In the low balling condition, the participants were first asked, and that's a bit similar to the study from from Cialdini, whether they were willing to participate at all. And when they accepted, they were told the charity run would take place on Sundays or Saturdays at eight o'clock. And just like in the study from Cialdini, that can be very tough for students who like to sleep a little bit longer, especially on Saturdays and Sundays. So that was the classic low balling scenario. For another group of participants, the procedure was exactly the same, but with one little difference. When the subjects were asked if they were willing to participate in the charity run and they just wanted to say, yeah, why not? Exactly in this moment, the experimenter ex excused himself and appeared not to be on the line for a second or two. So this prevented that the participant could publicly say, yeah, I will do this. And then the next step was to tell them, well, the run will take place at eight o'clock on Saturdays or Sundays. They also had the third condition, which was the control condition. And in this condition, they were told the truth right from the beginning. If we take a look at the results, we see that the low ball technique again was very successful almost 40% of the students really said, yeah, okay, I will do this on Sunday morning on seven, on eight o'clock. But in the other two conditions, especially also in the condition in which there was no public agreement, only about 15% of the participants said yes. So it's absolutely crucial to make the low ball technique work to wait for the public agreement because then the commitment is much stronger then the other person feels the urgency to present herself exactly in the same light as she presented herself when the person said yes of course i will do something to help the needy children and it's hard to present oneself as somebody who says well 
I would like to help the needy children, but if it's on Sunday morning at 8 o'clock, no, 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 then, then no. Mm, that's too much effort for the needy children. <laughs>